In this video, you're going to build a customer review analytics dashboard using the Avalanche dataset. And so here we're going to perform data processing on a data set called the Avalanche. And this is a new data set that we've just created for a hypothetical winter sports company. And so we're going to analyze the general sentiment of the customer review data. And we're going to do that in an end-to-end -end workflow. And so if this sounds like fun, stay tuned. So the first thing that you want to do is to download this notebook. And we're providing this in the GitHub repository called the Avalanche Customer Review Analytics. And so in the repo, you're going to find a Jupyter Notebook file, the already prepared data set. So by the end of the tutorial, you would have created the customer review.csv file, which you could have a glimpse. So you're going to notice that it is in a structured format, but that initially we're going to have started from a zip file of Microsoft Word documents where each of the hundred files are containing the customer review text. And so we're going to take that and then we're going to use Snowflake to perform data processing, converting it from a unstructured format into a structured data. And so the first thing that you want to do is follow along in the setup.sql file. So here you could copy the code to create the database called Avalanche DB and also create the schema called Avalanche Schema. So go ahead, open up here, go to projects, go to worksheets, and then I already have created a worksheet here, but if you haven't already, you could click here to create a SQL worksheet and then paste the SQL query. So this will allow you to create the database called Avalanche underscore DB and Avalanche Schema for the schema. And you could highlight this or you could click here and then run all to perform the creation of the database and the schema. Since I have already done that, I'm, I'm not going to do it again. And the next part is you want to create a stage. So go ahead and copy the code here. And then you could say create stage as kind of like your own in, inline comment, paste it in here and then run these blocks of code. Click here to run it. And then you would have created a stage called customer reviews, and it will be located here in the Avalanche DB database in the Avalanche schema. And once you have created the stage at this point in time, you're going to notice that if you go here in the sidebar menu, go to data, go to databases, click on Avalanche DB, go to Avalanche schema, and then click on stages. For here, you're going to see that if I click on customer reviews, you're going to see a hundred lines here for the hundred files of the word documents. But in your case, what you're going to see is once you reach here, this part will be empty because you haven't yet uploaded the files. So what you want to do is go to the GitHub repo here. You want to download this zip file. So click here to download it into your own computer. And once you have done so, you want to unzip it. When you unzip the folder, you're going to see a hundred files as shown here. And if I click on one of them, let's have a glimpse at it. So it's just an ordinary Microsoft Word file. It contains the product review heading and then the name of the product and then the date, the customer review, is here in the paragraphs. And so we have a hundred of these and we're not going to manually copy paste them into a tabular format. So we're going to start off with these a hundred of these files. And then by the end of the tutorial, you would have got the CSV file called here, customer review and in a nicely formatted fashion where you have the product in the column here, the date, a summary, and also a sentiment score that is extracted from the summary text that you have here. Okay, so by the end of the tutorial, you'll have this information 
and then you would have built a notebook workflow that will allow you to process the data. So let's go ahead and download the Jupyter Notebook here. Go ahead, click and click on download. And then once you have downloaded, when you want to open it up in a new environment, you could go to projects and then you could go to notebooks and then you could click here. Or, um, I think here is better. Click on import Jupyter Notebook and then you would have selected the file that you had downloaded. The Jupyter Notebook file here, IPYNB. And once you have done so, you're going to see the same thing that I'm showing you right now. So I'm going to now start up the notebook. So give it a few seconds. The notebook will run. And so, yeah, I have already reviewed to you, shown you how you could create the stage. And now your stage will now contain the hundred files of the Microsoft Word customer review data. Now we're going to use SQL query to parse all of the hundred files. And so we're going to use document AI through the parse document functionality here through the use of Snowflake Core Text. So here, what we're doing is essentially going through the stage called the customer review. Then we're going to use parse document function to parse the data. And then we're going to iterate all of the files, the hundred files, and then we're going to generate this. We're going to perform it a hundred times. We're going to perform parse document a hundred times. And then we're going to get essentially two columns. The first column will be the name file name. And then the second column will be the content of the documents. And then in the next part here, so let me run this cell. So we're going to run the entirety of the parsing of the hundred files. Give us a moment here. And you'll notice in the sidebar, it will have this vertical uh, running indicator that tells you that it is currently running. And the cell name here is called SQL one. And then in the meantime, that it is running. I'm going to scroll down to the next part. Once that we had generated the output from before, we would have gotten the contents of the hundred files. And then the next part is because the file is still unstructured, it's, it has a lot of text, as you'll notice in the example before. We're now going to take that unstructured text and then we're going to generate additional columns into a structured format. So no, you'll notice here that it's now green, meaning it is finished. So we're going to take this. If you double click on it, you get the entirety of the content that has been extracted. And so we're going to take this and then we're going to parse the data some more. So we're going to use regular expression. And then from, from this chunk of text, we're going to extract the information and then generate the following columns. We're going to have the file name, product, date, customer review. Okay, so that will allow us to do that. So let's run the irregular expression. And it took only one second to do so. And the above stage for a hundred file took less than a minute to extract all of the content from a hundred files, less than a minute. And to make it into a structured format through regular expression took about a second. Let's run it further. So now, we're going to apply additional transformation on the structured data. We're going to use Cortex LM to take the customer review column. What we're going to do is we're going to perform some translation because some of the text here are in a foreign language. So we don't know what foreign language it is. So we're going to leave it blank here. But then all we know is that we want to convert it or translate it into English. And then we're going to create a column called translated review. And then we'll also take the big chunk of text, as you can see here, we're going to make it more concise. So we're going to create a summary of it. So now we have additional column called summary. And then finally, we're going to use the function from Cortex to calculate the sentiment score. If you scroll to the right, you're going to see the sentiment score here. So given the text of the customer review, we would get the corresponding 
sentiment as a score, as a numerical score, whether it is positive or negative or somewhat in between neutral. So all of these are powered by the Cortex large language model and through the use of the translate, summarize, and the sentiment function. So no prompting are required. You just provide the input and it will generate the output. And so that, let's run it. So here we're specifying the output from SQL 2, the cell above here. So SQL 2 is this particular table. We're specifying that into here and the resulting output will could be derived from the SQL cell, which is called SQL 3. All right, and now we have the translated review, we have the summary, we also have the sentiment score. And we're gonna proceed further. We're gonna convert it into a pandas data frame. Before, this is a Snow Park data frame. And so now we're gonna convert it into a pandas data frame so that we could perform additional transformation through common data science libraries that we would use. Now we're gonna create some bar charts and we're gonna use Altair to do so. So we're gonna take the sentiment score, we're gonna make a bar chart out of that. And you're gonna notice here that we have explicitly mentioned that we want to have the green bars for the positive value and for the negative values, we're gonna color code them as red. And we're gonna rotate the label here to 90 degree as specified here in the label angle. And then we want the year, month, date format for the tick label on the X axis. And then we want the height to be 500, right here, 500. So this allows us to get a daily sentiment score for each day. And if you hover your mouse over, you're going to see the product name and also the date. And so these are an aggregate of several product review. And so we get to see the sentiment score add up here in the aggregate. So on some day you might see that there are also negative review as well. And now we're going to, let's see if we have already run this line. That was from a previous run. Okay, we're running it again. So only 0 0.2 seconds to run this one. And let's run the product sentiment score. Okay, so not even 0 0.1 second. And so this is the aggregate for the product. So we aggregated by product. And then we get to see which of the product had the most sentiment score. So it seems that the ski goggles had the most positive sentiment score. And product that had pretty low value are the thermal gloves and the insulated jacket. And the other are pretty much mediocre um, or relatively good as indicated by the higher positive score. And then by the end of this notebook cell here, you see an option to be able to download the data. So we're leveraging the download button widget from Streamlit. And then here we're labeling it as download CSV. And then we're creating a new data subset called DF. And then we're using the double bracket to select for a particular column, which include the product, date, summary, and sentiment score. And then we're using the two CSV so that we will generate a CSV file, but we don't want the index data. And then we're encoding it as a UTF-8. And then the mine value here, we're specifying text of CSV. So if you click on it, it should give us the file. Okay, let me try again. Okay, when I cried again, this is what I got. And I clicked on it and I get this CSV file. Okay, so this is the generated data that we had performed in this notebook. And so additional resource links are provided here. And this is an end-to-end -end workflow example where you started from essentially a large collection of unstructured Microsoft Word document files. And then at the end, you get 
pre-processed data called the customer review data. When you download it, it's called this. And as I have already clicked on it, you're going to get it in a tabular format. So all of that end-to-end -end was done by you along with this tutorial. So give yourself a big pat on the back and let me know in the comment section what other future videos that you'd like to see on this channel. And so until next time, happy streamlining and happy coding.